as they get set to match up with the New York Jets. Let's go, boys. Let's go. So first and 10 Six now from the 30. They'll run with a second-year man from ASU, Kalen Balage. It'll go as a loss of a yard on the game's first play. Second down. An interesting and intriguing decision there defensively because they kept extra DBs on the field despite seeing the multiple tight end look that came out for the offense. I thought they were going to switch out of it. I didn't know if they felt they didn't have time or what the case was. Well, in any event, the extra speed allowed for great penetration as they stuffed that one behind the line of scrimmage. Going deep here for Parker. And that is going to be pulled in one-handed. Wow. The previous play, they barely got back to the line of scrimmage. Now they pick up over 30 yards. Brandon, we've both been around the game long enough that we know that in pregame, defenses are pretty amped up, aren't they? I mean, they're pounding lockers, and they can't wait to get out there. But when you hit them with some big pass plays early, it takes a starch right out of them. Fitzpatrick now. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Devontae Parker, the intended receiver. That'll bring up second down. Uh, you got a young quarterback. You know, maybe that's just an example of a growing pain for him. I think you're right about that because when the game starts to move fast and it moves quickly on him, a lot of times they fall back on what they know best. They're on. He's, he's slinging it on this one. Had a wide open target but didn't have the proper footwork to increase his accuracy. And he's going to lose a yard or two. Taken down behind the line. Clinton Williams able to collapse the pocket, get to him, and drop him for a loss of a yard. You never want to give up a sack. From the O-line's perspective, they hate it for several reasons, especially because they felt like they let little brother down back there in the pocket. Oh, no doubt. They have a ton of pride, and they go into every job wanting to keep that guy clean. They want that uniform with no grass stains, no dirt, nothing on it. But it's Under pressure again, and down he goes again. Jordan Jenkins providing a little deja vu, back-to-back -back sacks, and now they're staring at a fourth and long. Charles, a little bit of feast or famine on this drive. They moved the ball okay, but they've been sacked twice now. And they've got to figure out how to plug that leak a little bit, right? Keep them away from the quarterback because when he's not being hit, as you mentioned, they're moving the ball well. And this punt sails over the sideline. And the spot, it looks to be right at the 25-yard line. Jets offense takes the field again. We haven't discussed yet their Week 8 loss at Jacksonville that dropped them to 1-6. They lost that game 29-15. to Ground game wasn't good. Le'Veon Bell just nine carries, 23 yards, and then three picks as well for Sam Darnold. Not to mention he got sacked a career high eight times. And I know there was so much talk about his comment last week about seeing ghosts in the pocket. That's not what affected him in this game. And as I predicted, remember what I told you? He's a kid. He's used to living his life on stage. That ghost comment is not going to bother him at all. What bothers him is the fact that they can't generate offense. He's getting hit a lot and throwing way too many interceptions. I will say the Jags mascot coming out dressed up as a ghost, that was a pretty good play. Well, you know, nowadays there is a thing, I guess what would we call it, friendly trolling? Yeah. That would be kind of that competitive trolling that we see nowadays. Got to give them credit for that one. Week 8 was game one of a two-game Florida stretch for the Jets, by the way. They'll go down I-95 to take on the Dolphins in Week 9 before returning home to face the Giants. Dolphins bring on an extra defensive back on third down. Out of the shotgun, here's Darnold. He's going to sling this deep downfield and unable to connect, incomplete. Now give them credit, they took their shot, but it's going to bring up fourth down. But well, that certainly looked like something that they discussed all week in practice, getting ready for this one. Take the big shot right out of the gate. At worst, You'll open up the defense a little bit, loosen them up, have them back on their heels. Now Edwards to kick as he sends it away. And a fair catch taken back near about the 35, 36-yard line. 36 yards on the punt with no return, and it'll be Dolphin football. The Dolphins offense now ready to go back out onto the field and hoping to do better than they did their last possession when they punted the football. Appeal to the vanity of your offensive line. Tell them they control your fate. Leverage guys. Win the line of scrimmage. If you do that, you start to win first down. You win second down. And guess what? You start accumulating first downs. And that's what they need in order to not punt the ball again. 
Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. Now Balazs. And this winds up a gain of four to the 41. One thing to keep in mind, partner, especially in the second half, when you've got a running back of this size, of these dimensions, I can just tell you, attrition does set in for a defense because you're excited about hitting him in the first half, but maybe not so much in the second half, and some of these shorter gains turn into bigger runs later. Play action now, Fitzpatrick. He's airing it out for Williams. And that will be incomplete. I think the punter might start to get into a pretty good rhythm here if he keeps getting opportunities. But that's the last thing his team wants to have happen, right? The last thing you want to see is your punter feeling pretty good because he's out there all the time. Yeah, first quarter only, but they're 0 for 2 on third down conversions to start this thing. Here's Matt Hawk now as he'll kick it away for the second time. You rarely call your punter a weapon, but he certainly was there. How about that? Pinning him down at the one-yard line and helping out the defense in a big way. I'm telling you what, if I'm a defensive coordinator, I might be thinking safety right now. They'll start out here with a jet sweep. And now where are they going to mark him here? Well, they say he did get back to the one-yard line, but that could have easily been two points the other way. Well, it certainly appears that in this game, someone has decided they're going to open up their playbook. First quarter, and we see that play. I like their style. Right there, in the middle, 55. Here we go. On second down. It's Bell, and he'll get him a little bit of breathing room across the five to the six-yard line. It'll be a pickup of five, and that leaves him with five more. Third and five now. Bell, of course, three-time thousand-yard rusher. Sat out 2018, but you look back to 2017, a tick under 1,300 yards and almost 700 more receiving. From the gun on third down, here's Darwin. And that is incomplete. Well, the fans should be applauding this defense right now. It's an excellent job. They force a three and out, and they should be able to set up their guys with great field position, probably near midfield or better. Here's Lachlan Edwards now, as he'll punt it away for the second time. Rush comes and they block it. Oh, that is going to be a safety. Well, we, we thought these two defenses, they might come to play. One has already come to play here. A safety for the opening points of the game. Brandon, let's pile this play away because if it turns out to be a tight game, who knows? This could wind up being the difference. After the safety, remember, they also need to give up the football, and here's the free kick. Good work, good Out comes the Miami offensive Let's unit go. now. They get set to take over. They've had it twice. They've punted twice. Not the start they were hoping for. Not at all, and let's face it. Every facility we visit, everyone talks about converting on third down, how big that is. In this situation, they've had to punt it away twice, so they're furiously going over things on the sidelines. What do we need to do to pick up a first down and change our momentum? They'll start with a give here to Balazs. And he'll get this up past the 45 to the 47. A good run there on first down, and it'll leave them with a second and two. Well, you often say that sort of opens the playbook now, second and short. What do you think, early shot here? I like where you're going. Obviously, we've been together for a while because you know me. I want to take that shot early and loosen things up. They'll run it here. This is Mark Walton trying to run inside, but nothing there. He got maybe a half yard at most, but officially they'll be left with a third and two. 
And he got off the end there very quickly to make that play. Yeah, it was almost like the bullet train, wasn't it? I mean, just zoom. Quick, quick, quick. And what a terrific play, holding them to no gain. Fitzpatrick on third and two. Completes it to the tight end, Snipe. And he gets it down to the 48, enough for the first. First time these two have hooked up this afternoon, and it's a first down. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. They go play action here on first down. He's going to let one go deep. That's caught inside the 20. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. It'll go as an impressive 31-yard gain. We always talk about the guy who paid off the play, don't we? The guy who caught it or ran it. But how about the elements that go into making a big play? This one in particular, able to scan the field. Pocket held up nicely. What a terrific job by the offensive line. The route well run, and the football right on the money. And he'll get about three as he's taken down at the 14-yard line. I do know from experience that when you slow down someone's running game, you're now doing the dictating on defense. And guess what? Now you're getting ready to tee off on their quarterback because they have to throw it all the time. But you still have to be alert for the draws and other plays of that nature to make sure you don't get hurt. On second and seven, Fitzpatrick throwing middle, but it's incomplete. The throwing windows get a lot tighter near the end zone, don't they? And here's the thing. You already probably have three points in your hip pocket. You force a throw here and give up an interception, you come away with nothing. And especially tough in the middle third of the field where he threw that one. They head to the line facing a third and seven following the incompletion on second down. Fitzpatrick to throw it. And this is going to be incomplete. And there's a good opportunity to just want to ride there, a drop pass. I guess that's why they call them running backs and not catching backs. So on fourth down, Dolphin kicker Jason Sanders comes on. Sanders' kick is good. And that will give us the very rare scoreline of five to nothing. So it's our first offensive points of the game so far, and it gives us a very rare scoreline. We don't see this one often, 5-0. Yeah, it's been sort of a weird one to this point, hasn't it? But hey, in this league, you take points any way you can get them. After the field goal, here comes Sanders to kick it away. This will be taken in at the one. And a good effort on the return there. Gets him across the 30 to the 33-yard line. Now the Jets' offense, they get ready to head back onto the field. It's been an awfully slow start for them. This is their third possession. They don't have a first down yet. So that means they have to change up what they're doing. And for some teams, it's a change in tempo, usually moving it to more up-tempo type of an offense just to try and change their fortunes right now. What they've been doing so far isn't working. Maybe they'll do that. They'll start to drive with a carry by Bell. And he'll work this one up to about the 38. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. Despite the blitz, they're still able to pick up a nice, solid gain. The disadvantage of blitzing often alters the normal spacing and run fits and leaves creases like they were able to exploit right there. Now off the bootleg, Darnold. He gets it to Thomas. And they'll get this well past midfield before being stopped just before the 35. That one good for 26 and a first down. He missed on his first three passes, was 0 for 3. Now gets a connection. Maybe that'll get him going. Yeah, it wasn't a time for panic, but there was some concern because once you start in a certain pattern, 
you wonder, can you get out of it? And that flips the other way, too, when you're throwing it really well. In this case, now he's got his first completion. They think he might be off to the races. Well, by the end of last year, Herndon had solidified himself as the primary tight end for New York. Now, overall, second leading receiver in 2018 on the team behind Robbie Anderson. Packed his 39 catches, most among rookie tight ends in the league a season ago. On second down, it's Bell. And an alley to run. And they'll work it inside the 15-yard line before it's all said and done. It's a pickup of 17 and a first down. They're making it look easy out there. Another first down. So, so far on this drive, let me do this little bit of math here. Four plays, three first downs. That's a pretty good recipe for success. Now, after the run by Bell, here's another first and 10. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. Under a heavy rush, and down he goes. Hindsight is 2020, partner. Maybe they should have kept it on the ground again. Well, it almost looked like the O-line was run blocking again. I mean, they opened up a big hole last time. This time they opened up a hole, and the quarterback got sacked. Now, following the sack, they'll look to make amends on a second down and 17. Darnold. Open man is Robbie Anderson. And here he'll get it down to the seven. They get 14 back, but it leads now to a third down. Partney sold the go route really well. Thought he was going deep, then curled it back inside for a nice completion. DBs love when they pump the brakes, don't they? Yeah, that's really, that's really a whole lot cool. of fun. It's almost like you said, listen, we're going to sell the go. Just go. Well, let's see who's faster. Darnold on third down. Throw complete to Herndon. And he won't have the touchdown, but he will have the first down as he's tackled at the two. The gain of five that time gives him the conversion and makes it first and goal. That's the end of the first quarter. An entertaining start to this one. More to come on EA Sports. The Jets with the football here to start the second quarter as they go to work on a first and goal. Now Bell. And Bell works his way in. He's got a Jets touchdown. Taking it in from two yards out. And the Jets have taken the lead. And nothing special there. They show they were going to run the football. They ran it. They got it in. Like old-time football, right? Hey, this is exactly what we're going to do. Straight ahead power, and they got it done. The point after threw the raindrops up and good. And the decision to just kick the extra point winds up successful. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. This will be taken in at the one. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get it up to the 29-yard line. Out comes the Miami offensive unit now. They get set to take over. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember, they did put points on the board. Three points and, is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. Ten yards on the pick up there, and it'll be second down. On any explosive run, you can almost feel the ground shaking, and that's from the offensive linemen creating space for their runners. I had an old coach tell me before that he always told his runners, run around the offensive line in pregame. Get used to the ground shaking so you don't trip and fall when it happens in a game. On second and inches, Fitzpatrick, and down he goes. Fitzpatrick sacked. Brand 
Brandon Copeland came in there hard on the blitz and got him down nine yards behind the line of scrimmage. So now after the sack, third and long, and Fitzpatrick and company, a little work to do. On third down, Fitzpatrick. And the throw there going to be incomplete. You can tell they were hoping for a flag there offensively. Several on the sideline motioning. Hey, why not a penalty? Why not a penalty? I, what did you see? Yeah, I think you've got to let them play, and the officials are instructed. If there's contact coming from both sides, no flag. Let them fight it out. And forces fourth down. Now he's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. It'll be a net of 40 yards following a punt of 44. And the Jets will take over first and 10. The New York set to take the field. And thus far, the weather has not slowed this offense down one bit. They've looked good so far in the first half. They certainly have. And think back to our meeting with the head coach. And we asked him because we saw the forecast for this game, didn't we? He said, hey, have you prepared for this? And he talked about the different drills that they've done in adverse conditions, the wet ball drills, things of that nature. He said, I don't think it's going to slow us down much. We tend to handle it pretty well, and he's been right. They're throwing to start the drive, but that went incomplete. Well, Charles, 18 of the 32 teams have now played eight games half their season. The other 14 will reach the midway point next week, so we'll save the midseason grades and awards until then. But Thank you. I yeah, like that. Yeah, we'll wait on that. But let's look at a few underperforming teams thus far that have played eight games and you tell me what you think their final record's going to be. Now let's start with the Chargers at three and five. Big win in Chicago on Sunday. I like them to go five and three down the stretch and that gives them eight wins. Actually have them go six and two. I think they're going to go nine and seven. Ooh, right there on the edge of the playoffs. Okay, let's stay in the AFC West. How about the Broncos at two and six right now? I just don't see that offense improving. I think that they win two more games and go four and 12. Okay. And Giants, two and six. They're underperforming. Yeah, but their schedule really lightens up on the back end. They're playing hard. I'm going to give them six wins, six and ten. Lastly, and I might duck under the table when you answer this one, the Falcons at one and seven. Ah, that's a tough one because I wonder about what's going to happen with their head coach. But I think they'll play better down the stretch. Four wins, four and 12. You're off the hot seat, my friend. Thank you. Yeah, he was looking for the checkup bounce, didn't get it. That scoots all the way into the end zone now for a touchback. Out comes the Miami offensive unit now. They get set to take over. And they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you've called before, realize it hasn't worked go to so something well, else. and maybe you try and find one of those special plays from one of your better players, and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area. Meanwhile, they take a shot to start the drive, but this is going to wind up incomplete. A lot of contact there, but there was no way it appeared that he was going to get a flag on that one. Looking for it, but he wasn't going to get it. And as an ex-defensive back, you love it when they let you play and jostle downfield. After the incompletion, here's second and 10 from the 20. Throwing again. Fitzpatrick throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. Ryan Poole that time there to get a hand on it. Martin, I think it's high time to get him some passes that he's comfortable with. Some easy throws, some completions. He's not even hitting the 50% thus far. Well, certainly that has played a big role into why they are trailing right now. The Dolphins on third down. Just one for five to this point. This is third and ten. Working out of the gun, Fitzpatrick. And now another one thrown incomplete. Didn't have a receiver open downfield, as it turned out. Couldn't even find his outlet, man, because of the coverage. It's way too tight. Unable to find anyone open. Here's Matt Hawk now, as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. He'll take it at the 42. They'll score that a 36-yard punt, and the Jets will have a short field to work with as they take over first and 10. 
And New York set to take the field. They've got the lead. Last time had to punt it, though. What's the key to this drive? I think it's leverage. Ah, the leverage. big guys up front. You know the motivational speech on the sideline is, guys, give us an opportunity. Protect the passer, create space for our runners, and let's go ahead and get these guys. Low man wins. Let's go do it on this drive. <laughs> we'll watch that leverage on this drive. The safety, Rashad Jones, brings him down. So nothing there that time, and maybe you need to look to the O-line. They weren't able to create any space. No, they weren't, and you know as well as I do, as many offensive line coaches we've ever met, I think that'll be addressed loudly when those guys get to the sideline. And they're usually loud and big. <laughs> The Jets on third down. They've only converted once in four tries. They need just a yard here. It's third and one. To throw is Darnold. Herndon's got it complete. And he gets it to the 32. Good enough for a first down. Third catch of this first half for him, and this one is a first down. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Now a fake on the give here as they try to run pass option. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. Now a fake on the give here as they try to run pass option. And on this one, he'll get to the 15, right at the 15-yard line. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook, but oh so effective. Nice completion there. Keeps the sticks moving. Darnold from the red zone now. Caught here by Bell. And able to get him down, but he does reach the five. Let's go, Let's go. The Jet passing game in rhythm. They've got another first. Everyone's got to be able to catch the football. Doesn't matter what position you play, but if you're on offense, be aware a ball may come your way. In your face. They'll try and run for it on first and goal. And Bell works his way in for a Jets touchdown. Le'Veon Bell with his second touchdown here in this first half. And the Jets will extend their lead. And always a good first half when you can hit pay dirt twice. And it never hurts to have that good feeling as the game moves on. Just think about halftime. If, if that's is all he gets, he'll just sit there at the half and think, all right, two already. I can get some more. I can get some more. And he'll be encouraging his offensive line to create some space. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. This will be fielded at the six. And not a bad return here. He gets it out to the 25-yard line. Then the Dolphins getting set to go here. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. But you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times the punter goes to the sideline, puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. To throw, Fitzpatrick firing quickly here, and that's complete. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. 
Well, it's time for them to be good teammates right here. And what I mean by that is possess the ball for a little while. Get at least two first downs. Give their defense a chance to settle down a little bit after they give up a touchdown. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. <laughs> to throw is Fitzpatrick. Toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. The linebacker, C.J. Mosley, there in coverage. I would say it'd probably be a good idea for him to reintroduce himself to his receivers at the half because they're definitely on different wavelengths. But I also don't advocate waiting that long. Next series before you get out there. Hey, let's get together, guys. Let's get this thing moving. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. And it's caught by Parker. And getting this just shy of midfield, they'll spot it at the 49. It'll be a pickup of 16 and a Dolphin first down. That was simply snap, rock, and fire. I mean, they didn't take long at all. Slant route, and I loved where he put it. He put on the body of the receiver low so that only he can catch it. Yeah, I don't think there was any magical formula there. Defensively, that's just tough to defend. Very much so, and that way it allows the receiver to keep his body in front of the defender and not allow him to go through him to knock the ball away. And this will be stopped at the 44. That one good for seven yards. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made a nice, easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. On second down now, it's Walton. And a very similar result again. The Jets' defense once more stopping him behind the line. Another example right there how this defense really is winning the entire game at the point of attack. Yeah, right there at the line of scrimmage because they are dominating. It allows their interior guys to get upfield and spill into the backfield. So how are you going to combat that? You know, because they bring in your tight end, keep him in. Your running backs, they have to step forward. Bottom line. Your offensive line has to block them first to give yourself a chance. Two yards is all they'll get on the completion. It's fourth down. They didn't get the first down, but I have to say I do like the call. I like what they were trying to do. Try and hit your receiver on the run and see if he can pick it up, keep it on his feet, get a little rack yardage. Yeah, but a nice job defensively to get to him and keep him short of the first. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. And you can't do it much better than that. This ball kicks out of bounds at the four-yard line. Now, if you're a fan of punting, this game's for you. He's been out there quite a bit. That one may be his best yet. Yeah, he certainly got his leg loose by now. Kind of reminds me of my college football coach, John Majors. He loved the punting game because he liked the positioning, the field position, and he loved to play defense. They'll start out on the ground with Bell. And he'll get this up past the five to the seven-yard line. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. And that's frustrating for a defense because they've got them pinned down deep. And on the first play, they give up a run that keeps an offense on schedule. Yeah, because three to four yards, that's all you're looking for right there, right? That's absolutely perfect, really, as a play call. You get three to four yards on first down, that's what they talk about us all the time, about being ahead of the chains or on target ahead of schedule they were after that run and he will take this up to about the eight yard line just a one yard pick up there and it's going to make it third down at six and this is why aggressive defensive coordinators love to blitz it wreaks havoc because they end up taking their attention to the blitzers freed up the d lineman to make the play Throwing here on third down, Darnold, and that is incomplete. Anytime a ball's thrown in the middle of the field has popped up in the air, I expect someone to catch. It doesn't matter whether it's offense or defense because there's usually a great amount of bodies in that part of the field. In this case, no one came up with it. Here's Lachlan Edwards now. Remember, though, he did have one blocked earlier. On the return is Williams. 12 yards on the return that time. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. 
And out come the Dolphins now. now if you're a fan of punting, and I know that not many people are, but this game kind of turning into one for you. Well, it's okay if it's a skills contest, right? We're, we're really into it then, but not during the course of an actual game. This has turned into a field position game, though. Sometimes a better punter may actually determine the outcome. Now an open man. That's the tight end, Gesicki. It's complete. A very solid gain of 27. But when you hit him on the move like that, and he's able to get into open field with a full head of steam, oh, boy, it's going to be tough to get him down. Yeah, there was a big window. They're lucky they did get him down. This quarterback now 8 of 17 so far, under 50%. Off the play fake here, Fitzpatrick. Stepping up, he's going to keep it. And he'll get it down this time to the 17. Nice work to get seven out of that, and it's second down. And that was not a bad scramble there on first down. He didn't force it, nor did he throw it away. He was able to take off, and now he made it a very manageable second and short. Draw play. Here's Walton. And he's eaten up at the line of scrimmage. Might have gotten a yard down to the 16. I know the scouting report on him is that he doesn't possess the eye discipline to be an elite linebacker. And what that means is his ability to read, react, and make a play. But on that one, he looked like one of those guys. The Dolphins on third down. They've struggled to the tune of two for eight so far. Here it's third and two. This will be caught at about the five. And he couldn't quite get there. Tackled down at the one. Now a play fake here on first down. Looking end zone, but it's incomplete. It's been my observation. There's been a nice variety of play calling defensively. You and I often talk about an offense's ability to keep a defense off balance with what they're doing. I think the converse has been true in this game. Yeah, I think you're right. They seem to have gone off tendency quite a bit, but only the second quarter, a lot of time to change things. Here's a run with Belage, and he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. That'll wind up going for a loss of four, and that'll make it third and goal. My 20! It's been a long day for you. Throwing Fitzpatrick to the end zone, but it's incomplete. I'm going to need some help with this one. How did he miss it? Wide open in the end zone. He's not hurried. He's not hit. And somehow, incomplete? Yeah. What happened? During film study, that's one where he's just going to shake his head, not be able to believe it. Six points go by the wayside on that one. Sanders' kick is good. And that'll move him back within six now. No problems in the field goal department so far. He's two for two. Pretty reliable here in this game, isn't he? And to me, that bodes well for them. If they need him late in the game, his confidence should be sky high. After the field goal, here comes Sanders to kick it away. This will be taken very short. And they're going to start this drive in pretty good shape as they get it up past the 30. And New York set to take the field. Still more than a minute to go, so you know, there is time if they want to mount something here. Not only time, but they have three timeouts at their disposal as well, so that changes everything that you're doing here. Without those timeouts, you can only work the sidelines hoping to get out of bounds. Here, the middle of the field is still available because you can call timeout and regroup. On first down, it's Darnold. 
He's got Herndon, his tight end. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. First play of the drive, a success, 19 yards. The Jets are going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. Darnold now 9 of 16 through the air as he's got it first and 10. Out of the shotgun, here's Darnold. That one complete to Anderson. Now the Jets going to use the second of their three timeouts as the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. Darnold off the play fake to Bell. And the throw left sideline here is caught, but they'll rule it incomplete. Couldn't keep his feet in. Second down. Well, the incompletion, yes, but maybe here not the worst thing in the world? No, not on first and ten. Actually gives them a chance to regroup, relax just a little bit. They huddle up, talk it over. Then they get a chance to continue their drive. From the 34, they'll come to the line on second and ten. Now Darnold. And that is incomplete. A lot of force bearing down on him there. He could not hang on. It's third down. Feels like they're getting caught in between here because any completions on first and second down, now you got to worry a little bit about the clock because you prefer not to give them another shot here in the first half. But if you don't pick up the first down, guess what? You're likely going to have to. Throwing again is Darnold. Hooking up over the middle with Herndon. Now the Dolphins going to burn the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. So on fourth down, Adam Gase turns to the field goal unit. And this will be a 45-yard attempt. Fickens' kick is good. And that'll boost their lead to nine. It's 17-8. to eight. Maybe a little fortunate there. That was leaking a little. Maybe leaking a lot, but he got it. Yeah, he actually was able to make it work. How about the body language, though, right? As he watched that ball leak to the right, trying to, trying to bring it back in and had just enough to get it done. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. That's fielded in the end zone. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. The Dolphins offense now working their way back onto the field. Inside of a minute left in the half, does the fact that you're down on the scoreboard influence what you do or, I guess, don't do on this final drive? It certainly does, but what influences me even more it's who I've got running my football team out on the field and the weapons around him. Can he make a play? Can he get into someone that we're going to trust to take care of the ball? If that's the case, I might push it a little bit here and try and get something before the half runs out. The Dolphins going to take their second timeout as the clock will stop with 33 seconds to go in the first half. Out comes the Miami offensive unit now. They get set to take over. And they had three points last time, but they didn't want three points because they were well within range of scoring a touchdown. We'll see if they can do better now. I'm with you on that one. Let's just go ahead and be frank about the whole thing. The only one happy about the three-point kicker. Exactly. You put it through the post. That's going to help him in contract time. But that offense, they're thinking, let's get in the end zone this time. I don't know if that helped him in contract time. You, you could have kicked. 
get that one through. I don't know about that. Toe bash. <laughs> I don't know about toe that. Toe bashed it. <laughs> Super toe. <laughs> Those passes out that far wide always make you hold your breath a little bit. Felt like it was in the air for a while. What it does is it allows a defender to gain some ground, come from a long distance, and have a chance to affect the pass. Going deep here for Parker, and that'll be incomplete. Well, they took their shot all right, but it comes up empty, and it's fourth down. Well, partner, they're not content to run this one out as we head towards the half, trying to hit a big chunk play right there and add to their score. Yeah, this is a confident group. At the very least, they're thinking field goal. Yeah, and I don't blame them one bit. I don't think you sit on the ball going into the half when you have a chance to put some more points on the board. And a fair catch signaled for and taken just outside the 20-yard line. A 40-yard punt, no return. And control of the football, switching hands with very little time remaining until the half. Final 17 seconds of the half here as they come up to the line, first and 10. They'll indeed try to run it out as they start on the ground. And he'll just push his way forward for a few as the clock will run. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. We have hit halftime. Still two more quarters to go. We'll take a timeout. We'll be back after this. You're watching the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. It's in the game. Forecast calling for more of the same. The rain's set to continue as we are underway in the second half. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. And New York set to take the field. They have the lead. Now they'll be looking to extend that lead. And this is where I enjoy talking about one of my favorite subjects, tendency breakers, or counters, as I also like to call them. You've done things in a certain way in the first half, and they've had ability to see what you've done. They're going to make their adjustments. So guess what? You adjust yourself and try and stay ahead of the pace because you are looking for some separation in this ball game. The adjustment to the adjustment. Without a doubt. <laughs> show them one thing, hit them with something else. The goal for any offense versus his own defense, find the holes where guys are available and put the ball on the receiver before any defender can step up and fill it. They did it well there. Perfectly executed crossing route. Looking to throw again on second down. Darnold. Dancing to his left. And Darnold, he lost the football. And this is picked up by the Dolphins. And he will return this one to the 30-yard line. So first and 10 now from the 30. Now a fake on the give here as they try to run pass option. Devontae Parker was the intended receiver. And now it's second down. They always say that real estate is about location. Well, guess what? When it's a slant route, the quick ones, timing, timing, timing. Got to be able to lead your man with the football. And the timing off right there, threw it behind him. Ball on the 30 as they come up second and 10. A short gain here, maybe a yard to the 29. You got it. You got it. The goal of a wide receiver screen is get enough blockers in front to create a wall and let him pick his spot to run the football. How about the defense there swarming to it and not allowing that to happen? Did not let him get downfield. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. From the shotgun, it's Fitzpatrick. He's going to go up top for the end zone. And that will be incomplete. Well, they weren't scared to let it fly, but it falls to the ground and brings up fourth down. But that was certainly an aggressive call and an aggressive play. Instead of just going for the first down, took the shot in the end zone, went for the touchdown. And on third down, they said, forget about the sticks. We want six. And this is going to miss left. I don't think it even got there either. It's no good either way. And this score will stay right where it is. Now, if this was a clear day in September, I'd say this is well within his range. I'd feel very confident about this kick. But let's be honest about it. In these elements, the difficulty level gets ratcheted up by at least a factor of five. Good starting position for the Jets as they come up first and 10 at their 36-yard line. Now it's Darnold. And that is incomplete. 
Showed off the arm strength there, but to no avail. Second down. Partner, earlier I asked you about some teams that were underperforming so far. Well, right now, let's play a game arrow up, arrow down. I'll give you teams that are kind of in the middle of the pack. You tell me if they're going to go up or down second half of the season. Let's start with the Raiders at three and four. Arrow up. I think they're going to beat the teams they're supposed to beat, and they will beat someone good down the stretch. Okay. Now, Jacksonville, they're 500 right now, four and four. Yeah, but their division is conducive to their arrow going up. Gardner Minshew playing well. Maybe Nick Foles comes back, and I like that defense. Okay, the Lions got a win last week to get to 3-3-1. Three, three and one. How about them? Don't like their division. Minnesota Green Bay within division. Unfortunately, arrow down. Lastly, how about the Panthers, 4-3. and three. Defense is supposed to travel. That was a tough one in San Francisco. Under pressure now, Darnold, and he goes down. Well, they went with a nickel. They throw in an extra defensive back. Coverage was very good. Yeah, it was exactly as you would expect. A passing down. You bring in the nickel package. Just as you described, the coverage was excellent and allowed one of their linemen to end up getting to the quarterback. Here's Lachlan Edwards now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. Just a yard return there after a punt of 49. And that will come the offense as they take over. So now here come the Dolphins. And they've got to be a little bit frustrated about that last drive. Missed field goal. Always hurts a team because, you know, you've put something out there. You've given yourself a chance. You're in range, and the ball doesn't go through the post. But it's not something to panic about, I don't believe. Just keep playing and keep going. On first and 10, Fitzpatrick. And that is incomplete. Took a shot there on first down, but he couldn't reel it in. Well, we have a moment here after that incompletion with it being Halloween week. Let's do something Halloween themed. Give me your three scariest defenses in the NFL. Ooh, I love your theme. I like that. Corny as ever. Yeah, corny but good. All right, let's start with the Minnesota Vikings because their ability to mix and match, how cohesive they are as a veteran unit and big-time playmakers at every level. And Harrison Smith, the fixer, the guy can go up and down, backwards and forwards, and make plays for you. Number two for me, San Francisco. They could easily be number one. The problem is New England is just out striping everyone. But think about what San Francisco is doing. Youngsters up front, guys in the back end, Richard Sherman having a career year, a rebirth type of a year. But New England giving up 6.7 points per game, or is it 7.6 points per game? 7.6. 7.6. I'm trying to make it even better than what it already <laughs> is. But those Patriots, you can't really name too many stars. Probably Stephon Gilmore, their corner. But after that, they just play so well, it doesn't matter. They're the Patriots, and they shut you down. Here's Matt Hawk now, as he's on to punt for Miami. Fair catch, signal four, and taken just shy of the 30-yard line. So a change of possession here on the punt. And possession will switch hands first and ten. Darnold going to lead the Jets up now first and ten at their own 28-yard line. Darnold from the gun. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Taco Charlton. It'll go as a loss of about eight as he gets in there to drop him. Man, he got in there so quickly, Charles. What could the offense have done to adjust and account for that? But what you're hoping is that you figure out and you see and get a clue that maybe there's going to be some pressure coming at you, and you change the blocking schemes. Maybe you go to max protection. The biggest one is maybe you bring your running back in to try and keep you clean. But in that case, that didn't happen. Zero accountability, and a sack resulted. And, partner, I think that's a great example that not all tight ends are created equal because everything was right. Got the completion, but he's not one of the more dynamic guys in the league. So even though he caught it, couldn't turn it into much more. Third and long, it's Darnold. And that is incomplete. Jerome Baker right there in coverage. Not only was the call spot on, how about the execution of that defense right there? The zone was absolutely locked up tight. He was trying to force it in there on third down. But if there's a time to force it, he felt like he needed to make a play, right? Yeah, exactly right. Third down, you got to try and find something. There's nothing available there for him. Now Edwards to kick as he sends it away. 
We'll call that a punt of 54 yards. Well struck. And it'll be Dolphin football. Out comes the Miami offensive unit now. They get set to take over. And on the last go-around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency. Move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. The Miami first down, that one going for a gain of 11. First downs have not come easy, and neither have runs like this throughout this game. Absolutely not. He finally felt like, whoa, a sigh of relief. We got something going in the running game. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. So that'll back him up five. They'll stay on the ground. Balazs again. Four yards there on the carry. Gets it back to second and 11. There's one of the reasons you like to blitz even on rundowns. It confuses the blocking assignments. It doesn't allow those offensive linemen to get up to the second level. They go play action. Fitzpatrick going up top. And this is going to wind up incomplete. The coverage there too strong on the deep ball, and now they face a third down. Sure, that pass was incomplete as they made an attempt to get a big one downfield, but that's okay because the second part of that is if you don't get the completion, at least you've told the defense you're trying to stretch them out a little bit, and they may have to change accordingly. 65! My turn! My turn! to throw on third down. Fitzpatrick, and this is going to be incomplete. And we're into the second half now, and this is an offense that continues to struggle to sustain a drive. Looks like they're just totally out of sync, whether they're running the ball, passing the ball like we saw there. I don't know. The rhythm seems off. Here's Matt Hawk now as he's on to punt for Miami. 46 on his first kick. This one in that neighborhood as well. The call for a fair catch, and it's made at about the 23-yard line. It'll be a 39-yard punt, no return. And the Jets will take over first and 10. Darnold going to lead the Jets up now, first and 10 at their own 23. Faking the give, Darnold. He'll air it out deep for Thomas. And a double coverage, and it's intercepted. Picked off near the 42. And they finally put it into this return, but not before he's all the way down to the 37. He couldn't get the hook up there that time with Thomas. Melage. And running room scarce here. He's going to be stopped in his tracks at the line of scrimmage. Neville Hewitt on the stop. That didn't appear to be a run blitz. He just darted in once he saw the run develop. That appeared to be a case of see ball, get ball. So after the run for no gain, here's second and ten. From the gun, Fitzpatrick. Looking sideline, incomplete. The turnover put him in great field position. They don't want to squander it with third down coming up. No, not at all. And you know what else you do? You make your defense mad. Yeah. They got you the football, gave you a great opportunity. you got to cash in and get some points. Hey, Big play Miami. coming up. Here's third and ten. I would expect to see some pressure here. And the blitz does come. Got a man. It's complete. Williams. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. That one good for 13 at a Dolphin first down. This quarterback now a perfect 8 for 8 to start the second half. Not bad. First and 10. Operating from the gun, Fitzpatrick. And that going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. 
We have not seen a whole lot of wide open receivers. Everything seemingly has been contested. And that's another nice job there to force an incompletion. They've been very cohesive, knowing each other's moves all game long, and they've been on the spot just about every time. And they've held them in check on the scoreboard. To throw once more on second and 10. Fitzpatrick, and he gets it inside the 10 to the 9. Give him 14 on that one, and a first down. Well, they obviously read man coverage there, partner, and he got downfield, broke down the defender, made him what do you think. Mean by that? Bro, bro. Yeah, he made him think he was going to run a different route. Probably thought he was going to take it upfield, and then he curls back inside for the completion. They'll try and run for it on first and goal. And they get him down at the one. He had the broken tackle, but ultimately could not get into the end zone. That's what they wanted out of that first down play. Run it down there, now they're knocking on the door. The only thing that would have been better was getting it in, and now they can do whatever they want because they've got confidence on their side. Line up quickly and go, or savor it a little bit, but I run right back at them. Second down and goal, Fitzpatrick. And that is caught. Touchdown, Miami. Clive Walford there to make the grab as they have now chopped this lead down to three. Now, there was no going through the progressions on that touchdown pass. Yeah, nor was it necessary. His receiver won that route early, presented himself, no reason to wait. Go ahead and put it on him and score a touchdown. Extra point up and good by Sanders, and the lead is down to two. Now after the touchdown, ready to kick it away is Sanders. Short kick here, fielded about the 17. And they're going to strike this drive in pretty good shape as they get it up past the 30. Now the Jets offense about set to take over as they head onto the field. And last time, one play interception. So this offense, they should be fresh. <laughs> That's a good way of putting it. And I can't wait to see what they decide to do with play caller because a one play drive where you throw an interception, a lot of people think the very next time out, run the football, don't give them a chance. Maybe play action? I think maybe you go play action, show your quarterback, get a little confidence in him, and let him fling another one. And he'll get it out near the 40 to the 39. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. They'd love to just strike back with a touchdown right here, and if it's a long play, so be it. But the main goal, get a couple of first downs, run some plays, run some clock, allow their defense to get a chance to catch their breath, settle down, and relax a little bit after they just gave up the score. Now a pass taken in by the tight end Herndon. Only three yards on the catch. It's third down. I think it's okay there. They didn't get a whole lot on that play, but it's nice to have a safety valve that's built like this guy. Big target, guy you can spot pretty easily. Put it on him when your other targets aren't open. Open man is Robbie Anderson. Give him 15 yards on that one, and the Jets move the chains. He was the leading receiver for the Jets a season ago. Robbie Anderson, 50 catches, over 750 yards, and getting more and more comfortable with Sam Darnold. Now a year plus under their belts collectively. You'd figure that those numbers for Anderson might be trending further north. A first down throw, Darnold, and he fires one that's intercepted. Picked up by the linebacker, Raekwon McMillan. And his guys are going to take over at the 39-yard line. Okay, time for a league-wide tangent. Let's look at the divisions. I want you to hand out a bronze, silver, and gold medal for what you think are the top three divisions. Okay, let's start with the AFC South because it's extremely competitive. I'm not sure who the best team is. 
I suspect Indianapolis, but everyone is within striking distance and everyone you can make a case could win that division. Then I think we go for the silver, the NFC North. At one point this season, every one of their teams was above 500. Chicago's falling off the pace a little bit. Detroit has as well, but Minnesota Green Bay, that's gonna be a heck of a fight to the finish. And finally, the best division to me, the NFC West. Okay, who's going to win it? Right now, it looks like San Francisco. They're still undefeated, of course, and they're playing great defense. Seattle, very much in the fight. And of course, the LA Rams seem to be getting their groove back. And guess what? Arizona, they're not as miserable as we thought. Yeah, they're three and four. The AFC South, though, that's the interesting one because you're right, nobody is below 500, but nobody has more than five wins. They are all, as you said, stacked right there together. Four yards on the pickup, and that's going to bring up a fourth down. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers' tight ends because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. And a nice job here to down this one right on the five-yard line. Now, if you're a fan of punting, this game's for you. He's been out there quite a bit. That one may be his best yet. Yeah, he certainly got his leg loose by now. It kind of reminds me of my college football coach, John Majors. He loved the punting game because he liked the positioning, the field position, and he loved to play defense. Trying to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. Thomas has got it. Complete. A gain of six there on first. Many teams, as soon as they spot man defense, if they haven't called a hitch, they'll get to it as fast as they can. They want to put the ball in the hands of one of their best playmakers and hope that he can break a tackle on the outside and go for big yardage. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion, so here's second and four. To throw is Darnold. And he's got a complete to Anderson. And out of bounds across the 15-yard line. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. The start for them near flawless. Defense gets him a three and out. Two quick pass connections on offense. So that's how a team works together. Just what you described. Get them the ball, give them a little momentum. And they're capitalizing off of that. Thanks a lot, guys. Play action. It's Darnold. And he's going to lose yardage here. As they will switch ends as time has run out on this third quarter of play. And that is going to do it for this third quarter of action. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Don't need it all back at once, but you figure they're going to need something here. 17 yards to go on second down. On the counter, here's Bell. And a short gain here across the 10 to the 12. Only three yards on the pickup. They'll be left staring at a third and 14. A tight game like this, such a tough spot for the offense to be in, even though they have the lead, Charles, back up so close to their goal line. they got to protect the football. And that's when you have to take care of your team with play calling as well. Not a lot of misdirection, not a lot of counters, not a lot of plays where you have extra ball handling. Get it right to the hands of your running back. Tell them to take care of the ball and try to move forward. It'll be a pickup of 16 and a jet first down. He's been the go-to guy. They needed a big play there on third down. Went his way. It worked out. Doesn't matter whether they've scouted it or that they think he's going to get the ball. He has a knack for finding his way open and completing the connection. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and ten. They run with Bell on first down as he'll get forward for about five yards. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. Offensively with the lead, you want to run the ball, keep the clock going, but you also want to still kind of be in attack mode too, right? So how do you do that and not come back on your heels? Yeah, think about all the practices we've watched where they have that tempo period to go over things just like this, where they describe the scenario, tell you what they're looking for, and make sure that they're still attacking, yet at the same time not going so fast as to leave too much time on the clock. Well, this is how you shake the thoughts of that interception on the last drive. You come out and start this one four for four. And watching him throw it around with that type of confidence reminds me of a guy I played with way back when who told me, I don't care if I throw 10 interceptions in a row, I'm going to stay confident and keep flinging it. I just figured there's something wrong with the football. 
And he's got the first down yardage before he's brought down at the 42. Third down turns to first with that five-yard pickup. So two first downs, and that moves the ball to the 42 now, first and 10. The shotgun snap for Darnold. On the catch, it's Crowder. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. That was the ninth play of the drive, and they pick up nine yards with it. That last catch short of the marker by just a yard leaves him with a very manageable second and one. Here's Darnold. And he's going to go down. They sack him back at the 42. Taco Charlton able to get in there for his second sack of the afternoon. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. Darnold and the Jets come up third and long following the sack. Throwing here on third down. Darnold, a screen to Bell. That's good for a Jet first down, a gain of 13. Well, probably the only thing he did wrong there was go out of bounds, nursing this fourth quarter lead. You want to stay in, eat the clock. Yeah, you got to love the effort, the catch, the extra yardage, but you got to know the situation. Stay in bounds, young man. Darnold going to lead the offense up first and 10, and he's hit on all six of his throws on this drive. He's going to air one out for Anderson, and that will be incomplete. Would have been a big hitter if they had connected. Instead, it's second down. Well, he'd been targeted quite a bit on this drive, and finally, I think the guys on the defensive side, they said no more. They slapped the double coverage on him, made it very tough for him to get the ball. So after the incompletion on first, now second and 10. Check 99, check 99. <laughs> Darnold. And this is incomplete. And now offensively is third and 10, and I'm just thinking to myself, actors always say, what's my motivation before a big scene? Right now, the play caller is thinking, what have I done before that's worked well that I can go to right now? Yeah, because they were pretty successful in the first half scoring points. Haven't done anything so far here in the second half. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have them looking at third and ten. They'll try and set up the screen. It's complete. And that play goes nowhere. Taken down, losing yardage at the 50 right at midfield. Well, you can see what they wanted to do. They wanted to set up the screen there, but it got blown up. It's hard to run that play if you're not getting a lot of pressure at the quarterback because the space doesn't open up. They were able to read that one and slow it down and stop it before they could get a first down. On fourth down, the punt team is on as this is set away. And no return possible here as they angle this one out of bounds. The Dolphins' offense now heads back on the field. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now, with the game this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. Now a deep ball here, hauled in just past the 50. A good pick up there, 26 Let's go. yards. Let's go. So how do you beat man coverage? First of all, you want to be a superior receiver, but you know something, that guy who's covering you, he's usually pretty good too. So the corner route is usually a great spot to get it done. So in jet territory now, here's first and 10 at the 48 yard line. Working out of the gun, Fitzpatrick. Oh no, he lost the football. On plays like this when the ball comes free, it's often unusual for the team that lost it to get it back because this is, this is a quarterback. The ball gets away from him. Everyone else is trying to execute what they're supposed to do on offense. They're usually looking in the other direction, downfield, or have moved away from him. In this case, though, a teammate is able to come up with the ball. On second and a long way to go, Fitzpatrick. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Walton. And he'll get up to the 43-yard line. 
I know most of the time when the ball's in the air, you're thinking wide receiver, tight end, but running backs, they can be a big part of any passing offense nowadays. 45. All right, D, let's go. All right, D. Double tight, guys, double tight. Third and long for Ryan Fitzpatrick. And it's caught by Parker. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. That one nearly 30 yards, 29 officially. Fitzpatrick on first down. Oh, he got position on him, and he pulls it in. Another big gainer that time. This one goes for 19 yards. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as, I can do it. So it's not that big of a deal to me, and I'm going to keep firing. Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit him, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. Oh, no, he lost the football, and it's scooped up by the Jets. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. And yeah, that one was relatively easy to see. I noticed that from up here. Yeah, it doesn't take a whole lot, does it? Sometimes you get multiples. What I always love on these offsides is when each side points at the other. Hey, you <laughs> did it. No, you did it. They deciphered that one correctly. So now from half the distance closer, here's first and goal. Now Walton. And he'll be stopped about a yard shy of the goal line after a pickup of about three. And Brad, they went to a nickel defense, and that's a surprise this close to the goal line. Because ordinarily you use the back end of the end zone, the sidelines as extra defenders, and you want bigger people on the field to try and help against the run. Second and goal from the one. They'll try to run this one in. And he's going to ball his way into the end zone for the Dolphins' score. Taking it in from a yard out. And the Dolphins are going to jump back in front. We well, got a little bit of everything on that run. Offensive line creating some space. But how about the guy running behind his pads into the end zone? What does that mean when a guy says running behind his pad? It means that he's going to be a physical runner. That way he's able to use his shoulder pads, his forearms, anything to ward off people. The power is way forward. Extra point up and good by Sanders. And the lead is up to five. Now after the touchdown, ready to kick it away is Sanders. Fielded about a yard deep. And all that work, but he stopped where he ultimately would have been, and he's simply taken the knee, and that's the 25-yard line. Here's the Jet offense now. They head out to take over. They punted last time they had it. What steps, Charles, do you think they have to take to make sure they don't do that again? Well, let's just go to the football 101, the trite expression 101. Win first down. Make five, six, seven yards on first down and make it a second and three, second and manageable. Keep accumulating first downs that way. Keep moving the football. You don't want to get behind the sticks because then the defense has the advantage. For a second there, I thought that might break big. Screen pass. Looked like it was coming together. Looked like there was an opening. Still ended up with a solid game. Maybe a good spot to take a shot. Here's second and a yard from the 34. Now a draw play. This is Bell. And he'll get it out near the 40 to the 39. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. 
But he does it at a high level, doesn't he? Because when I watch him, I think of his vision. Straight ahead, peripheral. Also has that sense of where holes are going to be before they actually open. I think that helps set him apart from many of the other bats in the league. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and ten. Darnold now to throw. Under pressure now, Darnold, and he goes down. Taco Charlton able to disrupt yet another pass play. That is his third sack of the afternoon. This has been a tough one for this offensive line. It appears almost like they've been on roller skates this entire game, the way they've been pushed around. Six sacks given up in this one. That huge loss on the sack makes this job much more difficult. It's now second down and 22 yards to go. The throw by Darnold, hauled in by the tight end Herndon. Eight yards on the completion, but now they face third down. When you execute a drag or a crossing route really well and give them a chance to let it develop a little bit, you can gain some significant yardage hitting your tight end on that one. Possibly a turning point. Big play coming. This is third and long. Out of the shotgun, here's Darnold. Open man is Anderson. And he gets this one to midfield before he's brought down. 14 yards is the pickup there at a jet first down. I think it all came together there. In-breaking route. Drove it with excellent pace. Money throw right there to move the sticks. Watch out, watch out, watch out, watch out. Let's go, fellas. From the 50, it's Darnold. And Thomas has it. And he's got this down to the 35. Give him 15 yards on that one, and the Jets move the chains. Pardon, you got to like what they're doing right there. Little by little, they're getting closer. Another good pickup. First down now, but that clock rolling. He'll look to throw. This is caught. And he's going to take it in for a Jets touchdown. Jamison Crowder, 35 yards. And the Jets have once again taken the lead. Wow, I know it's a never-say-never never situation, but to me, that looks like that's the one that's going to finish them off. The score that puts them in front here late, but not, you got to rally your kick team, don't you, and say the last thing you need is a big return. And what happens is guys get over-eager, get out of their lane because they're so excited they want to make the last tackle. <laughs> you mess up, could come back at you a long way. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. Short kick here. Fielded about the 17. And they're going to start this drive in pretty good shape as they get it up past the 30. Fitzpatrick and the Dolphins now. Down by one. 90 seconds remaining. And they need at least 30 yards, you'd have to think, here to move the football to have a shot. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. to throw throwing over the middle and it's incomplete Parker unable to get that one and that'll bring up second down so he's unable to complete it there and just not the game that you would expect from him he's been off the mark really start to finish yeah, it makes you wonder what exactly is going on is he a little bit dinged up here or is he just off just by a bit maybe he can get it back in this situation he'll need to He's back to throw. Completes it to the tight end, Smythe. Now the Dolphins going to burn the first of their timeouts as they'll talk it over here before what will be an important third down.
Mike 46. Mike. <laughs> now Fitzpatrick. Oh, it's a screen pass. That's complete. They had a nice job there defensively. They get him to the ground short of the first, right around the 42. The Dolphins going to take their second timeout as they stop it prior to what will be an important fourth down. One score down. Here we go. They're going to go for it here on fourth down. They'll try and run with Balage, and nowhere to go. He's going to be stopped behind the line. They had to go for it with such little time remaining, and the Jets are going to get the football here in great field position. Jets! Jets, 55 to Mike. Watch QB jump. Watch QB jump. Victory all but assured now as they take a knee here, and they're going to escape with a one-point victory. Now the Dolphins will use the last of their timeouts as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. The New York set to take the field. And with the defense out of timeouts, powerless to stop the clock, this should just be a couple of kneel downs. I got you. I got you. Switch, switch, switch. Victory all but assured now as they take a knee here, and they're going to escape with a one-point victory. So time to start going in the other direction as they come up now third and long. Darnold is going to take a knee, and that should just about do it. And how about this finish? Able to take a knee, run out the clock, and close this game out by one point. You talk about <laughs> how, many, how many coaches we talked to. They all said the same. All I want to do is win by yep. one point. That got tested in this one. Yep, and that cliche rings true. A single penny separates this one. So they're forced to punt on fourth as this one's away. Fair catch called for and made right at the 25-yard line. Well, Charles, a pretty exhilarating finish to the end of this ball game. At the end, the Hail Mary prayers, though, they went unanswered. Could have won it, but couldn't get it done. Almost fell schoolyard or playground, didn't it? You know, you remember when you called that play? Everybody just go long <laughs> and try and find someone open. They gave it a shot, but unable to successfully complete it.